Hello everyone, welcome again to Movie Masters. I am your host, Movie Master Mike, and I am back, and just as mediocre as ever, this is going to be my Star Wars The Force Awakens review. It's Friday, December 18th, and I saw it last night at midnight, but I was so tired so I had to go home and go straight to sleep. But it's like 9 in the morning right now, and this is going to be a spoiler-free video for the most part. There are going to be a few spoilers at the end, and I'll let you know when they start so you can turn the video off if you don't want to know spoilers. But uh, I had some pretty pretty high expectations for this movie. It's my favorite franchise ever. I love Star Wars so much. It's, it's all over my house. Uh, it's my favorite thing ever. Um, I hated episodes 1, 2, and 3, even though I know everything about them. The bar was set so high for me. I was ex it was just I was expecting the best thing ever and I don't want to say it was bad because it wasn't bad at all. I loved the movie. It was great. There were there was one section really one action scene that I just I could have done without. I didn't think it was that great. I didn't really like it at all. It was just too just too over the top. I don't know, I didn't like it. But everything else in this movie was awesome. The characters were awesome. The set design was awesome. The music was awesome. Uh, oh my god, the music was so good. I found myself listening to the music a lot in this movie. Um, but the, the costume design was awesome. Um, another thing I didn't quite like was Supreme Leader Snoke. You actually see him. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. I, I said this is spoiler free, so I don't want to spoil anything. But Supreme Leader Snoke, I didn't like his design. It really sucks seeing how old Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher are. It really does. It's kind of heart-wrenching because they are old and they are in this movie. Um, if you've seen the set pictures and the release pictures, you know what Luke Skywalker looks like. Uh, he's wearing traditional brown Jedi robes and he's got the big beard and stuff. And I've seen him on the red carpet saying... They wouldn't allow him to shave the beard. They really wanted him to have the beard. And, uh, but he doesn't look quite as old as the other two. I mean, I know he's younger than Harrison Ford, but Carrie Fisher looks pretty old. Uh, the new characters are really good. Finn, Poe, and Ray, I think, are all really awesome characters. Finn was uh, not what I expected him to be. I expected him to be a dead serious character, and he wasn't. Um, the whole like history and lore of the movie. I mean, from the, from the trailers you see, Han Solo telling them it's all true. You know, the, the Force, the light side, all of it. You know, so uh, that's not really a spoiler. That it's not really well known. You know, Luke and the Death Star and Darth Vader and the Force and all that stuff. Like, it's not really known throughout the galaxy that all that stuff actually happened and is actually real. But alright, now is when I'm going to get into spoilers, so if you don't want the movie to be spoiled, turn this video off now, because I want to talk about some spoilers. Okay, well, hopefully you turn the video off if you don't want to see it anymore, and you don't want to see spoilers, because spoilers, um, my last video that I did about Star Wars, I actually just uploaded like yesterday, I, had, I was really busy, didn't have a chance to like edit it, so it was the whole conversation, it was 50 minutes of me and Jurassic Jake just talking on what we thought this movie was gonna gonna be, what was gonna happen. And uh, I said it's probably gonna start with Poe captured and Finn realizing like, wow, like, this is terrible, I need to do the right thing. I don't wanna be Stormtrooper anymore, helps him escape. That's when the thing, the TIE Fighter falls to the planet and uh, that's when he meets Rey and Han Solo and then they leave and that pretty much happened exactly the way I thought it was gonna play out except there was a little bit of a scene in, before Poe got captured. You actually get to see Poe get captured. And then it plays out like that. Like, Finn's a, a stormtrooper he doesn't want to do anymore. He's like, this is terrible. I need to do the right thing. He helps them escape. They crash to the planet. No, but they crash in different places. And then, you know, he meets Rey. And then they escape on the Falcon, which I didn't expect Han Solo to not have the Falcon at all before that. And what I guess it explains in the scene from the preview, like, we're home. They take off in the Falcon to get away, and then they pick up by like a uh, some kind of freighter, and it turns out that's Han and Chewie. And you find out later that it wasn't a mistake that they picked up the Falcon, like they've been looking for it and stuff. So, um, 
So that happened ex pretty much exactly the way I thought it was going to happen. And then I thought that Kylo Ren was going to be kind of a whiny brat, uh, you know, like, he deserves this, almost like Anakin in the prequels, and he was going to be Han Solo and, and uh, Princess Leia's, or General Leia's son. And that happened exactly, it was exactly like that, like, he was kind of a whiny brat, and he was the son of Solo, and, and, uh, Organa, and... <clears throat> and uh, I also predicted that he was going to have, or he was going to kill his father to kind of, you know, cement himself as as a as a bad guy, as a Sith. And he did. He he killed Han Solo. I expected Han Solo to die. Uh, I've expected that for years because I know Han Solo or uh, Harrison Ford wanted his character to die to motivate the other characters. You know, it'd be it add so much more depth to their characters and stuff. So I know he's been wanting to die pretty much since 1980 or Han Solo to die since 1980 and it finally happened. I didn't like the way it happened. Uh, again, this huge cavern, bottomless pit, you know, that's the way you know, Luke fell down the pit, the Emperor fell down the pit, now Han's falling down the pit. But, um, so I got that right. I figured, um, I thought maybe the, the new Death Star planet, like maybe they just built the actual gun into the planet and then it could like take off so they can go around and shoot and stuff, but uh, no, it's just so powerful that no matter where they are in the galaxy, they just have to fire it and eventually it'll hit the target and blow up the planet, which was really awesome. Um, <clears throat> Jeff and Jake thought that um, you know, maybe they built it in the planet so the rebels couldn't just go in there, you know, shoot down this little trench and blow it up. You know, it's like, well, to the planet with billions of people on it or whatever, so you can't blow it up, but. They blew it up. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, things that were similar to... Um, it was kind of like a mix between A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. A New Hope with, like, you know, um, the plans being put into the droid and meeting the characters and they're getting involved in something that was bigger than them and joining the Rebellion and, you know, going against the Death Star. But then it was kind of like Return of the Jedi with, you know, like, the, uh, the lightsaber battles at the end and... The fact that it wasn't just a trench, like, in, like, like we've seen this before, you know, just like in Return of the Jedi, it's like, oh, another Death Star. And, um, Carrie Fisher was in it only, only for a little bit. Han Solo was in it for quite a bit. He was one of the main characters, which I liked, because I kind of figured he was going to die, so I was glad to see that he was in it quite a bit before going away. Uh, Carrie Fisher was in it for just a little bit. Um, the little alien, um, Phasma or whatever, or no, not Phasma. I forget her name, but she was all right. You know, she was just kind of there. She kind of knew too much. She had Luke's lightsaber that he lost on Cloud City. And Han even asked, where did you get that? And she said, that's a good question before another time. Um, I predicted that Luke was only going to be in at the very end. I thought, like, you know, after Han dies and, you know, this, everything's getting worse and worse for our main characters. I thought Luke was going to step in and, you know, just come out of nowhere and save the day. And he didn't. Uh, it was Rey. She kind of, throughout the movie, you find out uh, she has force powers and she's actually really powerful. And, and so she's kind of learning how to do it. And her and Kylo Ren duke it out at the end, which was awesome. Uh, Kylo Ren isn't as awesome as he thought he was. In the beginning, it kind of seems like he's really powerful. He just kind of, like, he does something, you know, like, has you freeze the Force, and then he just kind of goes about his business, and you're still frozen until he just kind of... Then, then he leaves, and then, you know, you're unfrozen or whatever. So, like, it seems like he's powerful, or he was very powerful, but ultimately not really. Maybe not with a lightsaber, because, I mean, he was... Finn put up a good fight, and Finn was just kind of... He really just wanted to get with the girl and run away, but uh, so he kind of had to step into the role of hero reluctantly. And but Finn was awesome. Finn was a great character. He was so funny. Everything he did was hilarious. He was kind of like talked talked fast, and and uh, the things he said were really funny. Like he was talking to her. He's like, "So, uh, what, do you have a family? You have a boyfriend? You have a cute boyfriend?" <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, she the whole time was just like, what? No, like, and just like, you know, kept going about the business. She was awesome with mechanics. She knew everything about mechanics and ships and stuff because she was a scavenger. She was scavenging on this planet. And that's how, like, she got food. She'd scavenge the, uh, the wreckage and sell it for food and stuff. Uh, 
so she knew everything. She was constantly fixing things and reverting this to that and taking this off to bypass this and that. And Solo kept going like, oh yeah, like that's a great idea. Like I like you. Like it was really cool. Uh, Han Solo and her. I mean, I knew he was gonna die. I kind of wanted him to die, only to push our characters, you know, further and you know, more motivation and stuff like that. But I would have loved to see Solo and Ray. You know, bond. Uh, you know, she become like the other co-pilot uh, person. Like he kind of offers her a job on the Falcon, and she was like, "You have to be a job lately." And she's like, "Wait, no, I'm waiting for my family at home on Jakku." She was left there as a little girl, and she's been waiting for them to come back, even though she knows it's hopeless. And then when they're at that little alien outpost, uh, she goes and she finds the lightsaber. So it's kind of calling to her, and she gets all these like memory flashes and visions and stuff, and. She was left on the planet, and I'm pretty sure she's Luke's daughter. Um, but you find out that Luke uh, put himself into exile because he was training all these new Jedi, and Kylo Ren uh, Ben Solo, which I thought was cool. I was kind of wondering what his name was going to be, because I knew it wasn't going to be Jason or Anakin. And if it was Anakin, it would have been way too um, like on the nose, because he's like you know a Darth Vader fanboy, Anakin. Skywalker, you know, so that would have been would have been two on the nose, but they named him Ben, you know, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but he, you know, he was training all these all these uh, young Jedi, and then uh, Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, uh, was like he went to the dark side, like he ended up killing everybody, and like Luke saw it as like it was his fault that you know his sister and his best friend's son went to the dark side, so he put himself in exile. But some, for some reason, he made a map to himself. He gave most of it to R2 and then another piece to somewhere else. And uh, that's what the movie's about. Like, that instead of in A New Hope, you know, we hid the plans of the Death Star and the droids and, you know, sent them away so the Empire doesn't get them back and hopefully the Rebels can find it and get it. This is like, we found the map to Skywalker, we put it in the droid and sent them away and hopefully the Empire will find it and hopefully the Rebels will. Uh, so it was kind of the same. But I thought it was weird, like, why would he make a map to himself? Like, why? Like, I don't know, just weird. But that's what the movie's about. Uh, they're looking for the map. Um, at one point, they're about to get the droid, and then Kylo Ren meets Rey, and he kind of sees that, like, he's like, oh, you've seen the map. We don't need the droid. I can just get it out of you. But then she turns out to be a little too much, uh, too powerful in the Force for him, and she escapes. Uh... <clears throat> Poe Dameron didn't play a huge role, and I knew he, I kind of predicted that he wasn't, he was just kind of there, he was, you know, like the, the pilot, he was, he was a bigger role than, like, Wedge or somebody, but, um, he was just kind of there for a lot of it, I mean, he was an awesome pilot, and, like, when he was flying the TIE fighter, it was pretty sweet, um, oh, man, so many spoilers, uh, Carrie Fisher doesn't die, but you, you find out, like, they did split Solo and, uh, and Leia, because of their son, and they kind of both blamed each themselves, and Solo went back to doing what he did best, which was smuggling, and uh, Princess Leia did. She went back to the Rebellion to be a, gen a general. Um, I knew Luke wasn't going to be in it, except for the very end, and he wasn't. He was only there for literally 30 seconds. Uh, once they get the other piece together from the map, because R2 like, went dormant when Luke went missing. So he finally like just wakes up and says, "Oh, here's the map." And BB is like, "Oh, and here's my map." And so they put it together, and just Ray, uh, R2, and Chewie take the Falcon to this planet. He's on this island, and uh, she walks up all the steps, you know. And he just turns around, and looks at her, and he's kind of just like, mm. he's kind of like, "Damn, someone found me, and it was you." Like, oh man. And then she just gives him. He hands his lightsaber to him, and then it just ends. He doesn't even grab it. It just ends. Um, kind of a kind of a, a sorry ending. I wish it was. Wish it would have said something like you know daughter or something to confirm that I was right about that because I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. But overall, this movie was awesome. Uh, action packed. It's definitely a J.J. Abrams movie. It's like you know like action let's talk action let's talk a little bit of action let's talk a little bit of action like just action everywhere so many explosions uh but it's good i wish uh captain phasma from uh, uh game of thrones she was barely in it i kind of wish she was in it more she didn't really do anything um 
yeah, really nothing. Like, she never took her helmet off. She kind of just told Finn, like, oh, get back in line. Don't take your helmet off. And then and that was really it. Uh, um, Ky they never explained Kylo Ren's stupid lightsaber, uh, why it has the two things shooting out the side. We do see Supreme Leader Snoke, who... It's just a hologram, so it's really big, and we saw that in Empire Strikes Back, where it was just a huge hologram of the Emperor's head. Uh, so I'm hoping he's not this 30-foot character. Hopefully it's just a 30-foot projection of him, but uh, we heard in rumors that he was like a 30-foot lizard person, and I didn't really like his look. He looked CGI, and after all the, the puppetry and sets and stuff that they went with this movie, and there wasn't a lot of CGI, but... Um, I really wish they didn't make, you know, Supreme Leader Snoke, the main bad guy, the new Emperor character, a CGI character. I mean, he's played by Andy Serkis, so, like, you know, the mocap's gonna be great, and the performance is gonna be great, but... Uh, it didn't need to be CGI, it could've just been a puppet, or a character, or a guy in a suit, like Del Toro likes to do. And there was plenty of that in the movie, which I liked, but, um... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, those are really my, my main gripes, is that, um, the ending was just like, oh, that's it, you know, and then, uh, a little bit of overuse of CGI in the characters, the little alien that they go to, to, to get some, some insight from, she was CGI, but, uh, this was, it was so good, um, I don't like it as much as the original trilogy, any of those three movies, only because I've only seen this one once, and I've seen four, five, and six a million times my whole life. Uh, so maybe after you know 29 years of me watching this movie, I'll be like, eh, I like it better than A New Hope or Jedi or something. But uh, definitely better than one, two, and three. Uh, they could have just filmed a big pile of crap for two hours, and it would have been better <laughs> than episodes one, two, and three. But that's it. Um, the movie is good. Everything I predicted basically was right. Um, apparently this movie has sold out, at least here, for like two weeks. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to break every box office record. I'm hoping it destroys Jurassic World. I'm hoping it, in the long run, destroys Titanic and Avatar. Avatar is not a deserving movie for number one movie ever. It, that movie just came out of nowhere. I never saw a preview for it. never saw any advertising for it. Toys, nothing. Just all of a sudden, I've seen Avatar. It's like, you know, it broke the box office records. I've like, ever seen what? Avatar. The the cartoon show? But, so I, I just hope it wipes that off the map. I don't want to see James Cameron at the top anymore. But anyway, thank you for tuning in and joining me next time when I do another movie review. Hopefully we'll be getting our Batman reviews back up and and running with that. Until then, I'm your host, Movie Master Mike, reminding you to speak your geek and balance your geek with Geek Equilibrium. May the force be with you.